Today we're gonna prepare tamales. Whenever you hear the words, let's make tamales, you know it's gonna take all day. But today we're gonna break it up into two days. We're gonna start by preparing the meat the night before. And for that, we're gonna prepare it in the crock pot. We're gonna be making beef tamales, but keep in mind that you can prepare this recipe with pork or chicken. And for this, we're gonna use various kinds of chiles. So we're gonna use about 13 to 16 chile guajillos. I'm using quite a bit because these are fairly small, between 13 and 15, give or take. And the best way to tell if the chiles are fresh is that they're nice and pliable like this. If they're crunchy and hard, that means they're quite old. So you want to get the ones that are still nice and pliable. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, two chile uh, anchos. The chile guajillo and the chile anchos are not spicy, but both of them add a lot of color and flavor to the dish. And they look like prunes. And they're quite hard. They smell like prunes. See? We rinse these prior to uh, putting them on the plate. So so we can just remove the seeds once we're, we're done And the same with the chile ancho, just a little, you know, just a nice little cleaning because they do go through a whole process when they're shipped uh, to the store, when they get to the store and when they get to your hands. And last would be, uh, I would say like a bunch of chile de arbol. Chile de arbol, what do you normally call it? Um, um, chile de arbol, I <laughs> Tree, tree chiles? Tree chiles, <laughs> but these are super spicy. A little trick when you're buying chiles de arbol, when you purchase them, they have bags that don't have the stem, and then they also have bags with the peppers that still have the stem. If you want them extra spicy, pick the ones that still have the stem on. Just a little trick if you want it super spicy. All right. So now we're gonna get started by cleaning the peppers, and then we're gonna lightly toast them. I like to use a paper towel so we can place all the seeds and the stems. No, you go ahead. Me? I can do it by hand. Me? My Me? hands are used to spicy. But these, we're not gonna take out the seeds. We're just gonna remove the stems. And these are pretty much pretty easy if you have some kitchen scissors that you use only for the kitchen. Uh, that's the ones that you use for you know your chiles. You cut the stem off. You just slice it down the middle. And you can do this by hand too, but I kind of like to do it because it's a little bit faster. You empty out those little seeds. Seeds just fall right off. So you, all you have to do is kind of like pull them out. There you go. That's it right there. And we'll just continue with the rest. These are very tricky to, uh, to remove because these are very hard. So you definitely want to use the scissors for these. Just gonna remove the stem and kind of open it and just and take out the seeds. Okay, I'm going to cut these into small pieces. When we take them over to the stove to toast them, they're gonna to toast a lot faster and more evenly. Just to about one inch pieces. And I'm gonna do the same with this one. The chiles de árbol we're gonna leave just as they are. And it's always so much easier when you have somebody to help you make tamales. When I make tamales, I usually just um, break it break it up into sessions like we're doing today because it makes it so much easier and a lot less stressful. You prepare the meat ahead of time and then the rest is just easy peasy because now you have, all you have to do is prepare the, the masa and then the tamales. And to cook the tamales, we're gonna cook them in an Instapot. So this is what we have so far. And it may seem like a lot, but it's really gonna add a lot of flavor to the <laughs> what happened <laughs> to that dish. Now when we uh, toast these, we're also gonna toast, along with the peppers, we're also gonna toast the garlic, which I have about one head of garlic right here. Um, this is about half a head of the garlic because these are super big. Look how big these are. So we're just gonna remove the husk and we're gonna add them in with the peppers. So this is the manteca that we rendered from the chicharrones Chichar that we made on the previous video. So if you haven't seen it and wanna know how to make the manteca or the lard, just go to the previous video. Subscribe, you gotta subscribe to get these videos up. 
but it's on the previous video that way you can kind of see how we made the lard because this is going to be the flavor for your tamales this is the key to making the the best tasting tamales <laughs> it's not the beef it's not the masa it's not the chile it's the manteca all right so we're gonna melt about a tablespoon of manteca and we're gonna wait maybe even less we don't need that much roasting the peppers and the onion and the garlic is just gonna add more flavor to the sauce because it's gonna bring out the flavor when i make them the traditional way i add the peppers into the pot so some of that flavor can stay in the broth because I use the broth later on to prepare the masa. But since we won't have a whole lot of broth, I'm gonna show you a trick on how you can make the masa come out a little bit red and it has a little bit of color to it. So now that this is melted, we're gonna turn it down a little bit. You don't want it to be too hot because then your peppers will burn. So we're gonna start by adding the onion first because that's what's gonna take a little bit longer to toast because this is so big. I'm gonna use half an onion i'm gonna add a little bit just to see how hot it is yeah, perfect all right let's add the onion we're gonna wait a few seconds and then we're gonna add in the peppers and last we're gonna add the garlic because these take less time to fry now to fry the peppers you can also use vegetable oil of course but the manteca adds more flavor to this so you have the manteca, use the manteca. So now I'm gonna add in the peppers. And once you add in the peppers, you wanna frequently move it because you don't want these peppers to burn. If they do burn, you're gonna end up with the bitter sauce and believe me, you don't want that. This is just gonna bring out the flavor of the peppers and it's gonna make your sauce a lot tastier. And as you can see, it's already starting to release some of that color and that flavor. Now we're gonna add in the garlic. Add in the garlic. Oops, just gonna saute these for about 30 more seconds. We're gonna add about four cups of water or enough water to where all the peppers are completely submerged in the water. Then we're gonna bring to a simmer. So this is starting to reach a light simmer. So now we're just gonna turn it off. And while this is cooling down, we're gonna prepare the meat for the tamales. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and cut our meat for our uh, tamales. And there's no right or wrong way to cut the meat. I mean, you can cut it in chunks, you can cut it into pieces. It's gonna get shredded. So like I said, there's no right or wrong way to cut this. So you can't go wrong. We're gonna use between six to seven pounds of chuck roast. We purchased this particular meat at Food City and it was labeled tamale meat. But you can also use chicken, pork, or turkey. And we're gonna use about six pounds of beef, which I'm hoping everything fits in the crock pot. We don't get stingy with the meat on the tamales. And oh, we, no. we like a lot of meat on that tamale. To prepare the sauce, we're also gonna need chicken bouillon, this one is optional. You can substitute it with beef bouillon, tomato bouillon, or salt. And this is to your liking. And we're also gonna need one tablespoon of cumin. About eight peppercorns. But before we uh, begin to prepare the sauce, I'm gonna grind the peppercorns. That oh, smells good. Okay, that should be enough. Just like that. All right, so now we're gonna add everything into the blender. Now these are not completely cooled down, but we're gonna add them to the blender. And as we're blending them, we're gonna remove the top so it can breathe and we don't have any accidents. Mm -hmm. three to four tablespoons and the peppercorns and the cumin 
Okay, so now we're gonna place it on the blender and we're gonna blend. We're gonna slightly remove this just so we don't have any accidents. Now it's gonna get really loud. The sauce is done. Thank you. Mm. The sauce turned out a little Spurs. bit spicy, but that's okay because that's how we. That's like. how we want it. Okay. Mm. Is that good enough? I uh, yeah, that's good. That's good. Okay. So I'm gonna put a layer of the meat. The meat. And I'm just gonna go right in. It's all. It's all gonna fit. It, it is. This is a six quart, right? Yes, yeah, six, six quarts. Quart. And we're making what, six pounds? Yes. I'm gonna reserve a little bit of the sauce in a container so we can use it to prepare the masa tomorrow. And then we're gonna add about three bay leaves. So let's get this covered. Seal it in, because we don't want anybody in. opening it up. But it's nice and sealed in. We're gonna put it at high. High. And then once we go to bed, we're gonna put it on low. And we're gonna leave it on all night. The meat has been cooking for about 13 to 14 hours. Before going to bed, we completely forgot to turn it down to low. But as you can see, the meat is perfectly fine and it's cooked to perfection. This is one of the reasons why I love to use crock pots because you can completely forget about it and it will still be fine. Now if they can only make one that it's twice the size of this one. Using two thongs or two forks, shred the meat, turn it down to warm and keep it covered while we prepare the hojas and the masa. To soak the hojas, I'm going to use my sink. You can also use a large bowl or a large pot. Fill the sink with enough water to where all the hojas are completely submerged in the water. Once you're done separating them, place a heavy object over the hojas to ensure that they're completely submerged in the water. I'm going to use a liner for the sink, but you can also use a heavy pot or anything that has a little bit of weight to it. We're going to let these soak for about 30 minutes in the hot water. And right before we begin to prepare the tamales, we're going to place them in a strainer to drain out the excess this water. This is about a quart of manteca, which is about four cups of manteca. And this is the one that we rendered from the chicharrones. So we're going to start by adding the lard to the bowl. And this may seem like a lot of manteca, but it's really going to add a lot of flavor to the tamales. And you can measure it out or you can just add it to the bowl. And we're gonna mix it until it's nice and fluffy. To mix it. Since we made the meat in the crock pot, we don't have the broth from the pot. So we're gonna use store-bought broth. I have six 14 ounce cans in here. And before we begin to prepare the masa, I'm going to heat up four cups in the microwave. So the broth is nice and hot. And since we still have a little bit of the manteca in the jar, I am going to add a little bit of the broth in here. this to the bowl and we're going to add about three to four tablespoons of baking powder two three four we are making 15 cups so make sure you add plenty since the broth i'm using already has salt i'm only going to add two tablespoons of salt and if we need more we can always add more but start out with a little bit 
don't start out with too much salt because then you can't take it away once it's in there. So now we're gonna add in the masa. Oh, these are, this is 15 cups of masa. We're gonna go big. <laughs> I'm gonna use the spatula because it has a lot of manteca on it. So we're gonna mix this first and then that's gonna determine how much broth we need to add. We started out with um, one cup so far for the jar and we're gonna mix this first until it has a crumbly texture. We're gonna use a heavy duty wooden spoon because it makes it easier to, to stir. I'm gonna add the sauce that I set aside yesterday the water as well okay so far we've used two cups two cups and we're gonna mix there's two more you're gonna need two more cups yeah we're gonna need I'm about gonna that four up. more we're gonna warm it you want to warm the broth. Here comes the broth. Echale tantito. Echale unas dos tazas. Two cups. That's good. Yep. Un oh. tantito más. There we go. Okay. Now mix this. That was exact. Yeah. Nine cups of broth for 15 cups of masa. Mm -hmm. This masa is ready. And we're gonna start by filling up this attachment steamer for the Instapot, because we're gonna cook a few in the Instapot. Pick out an oja here. Okay. And when you add the masa to the oja, you want to add it to the smoother side of the oja. The rougher part is going to go on the outer part. So I'm going to start by taking about a fourth of a cup of uh, masa and just spreading it out over the, the oja. And see how nice and smooth that goes on? And just spreading it out towards the bottom part of the oja. You don't want to get it on this part because that's the part that we're going to fold. And if you need more, you can always add more, of course. Okay, it's just as long as the bottom part is completely covered. So we're just going to add meat to the middle. You can make them as meaty as you'd like. And just kind of seal the top. And then we're going to place it and the little attachment standing up this way with this part facing the, the wall. And look at the size of this oja. When they're this size, I like to make twins. Let me show you how I do that. And rub it on one side, spread the masa on the bottom portion because it's so big seems like just a waste of oja just to make one tamal so we make twin tamales <laughs> that's what i call them at least two tamales in one okay everything's covered okay we got meat to one side here and then we fold it over And then we go to the other side and add meat on this side and fold it over. And now we meet at the middle, fold it over, and now you have two tamales in one. Twinsies. And we're gonna stand it up right there. And then we're just gonna continue until we fill that one up. Okay. 
This masa smells really good. All right, that's not gonna work. All right, let me get the Instapot ready. All right, so I'm just gonna make this last one, right? Yeah, I think that's the, that way that's they're not all bunched up. It. How many is in there? Like a dozen, maybe like a dozen? Yeah, about a dozen. Uh, it works great when you're making sweet tamales. When I make sweet tamales, I don't make a whole lot because not everybody likes the sweet ones. They like the savory ones. I add about a cup of water to the Instapot. And then we're gonna add in the steamer insert with the tamales. I'm gonna fold it over right there so we can get the lid on. That should be good. And then we're gonna close it. Yes. There we go. Right there. Annual for 60 minutes. We're gonna do 60 minutes. The timer will begin once the Instapot builds enough pressure. It should take anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes. Once the cooking process is done, you can allow the Instapot to do a natural release, but if you can't wait to have these delicious tamales, move the little nozzle on the top to release the steam before removing the lid. Remove the tamales from the Instapot and place them on a plate and allow them to cool down for about 10 minutes before removing the husk. The one cup of water we used was the perfect amount of water to steam the tamales. But since we're making quite a bit, we're going to steam the remainder of the tamales in the regular steamer. You can also freeze some of the uncooked tamales and use them at a later time. I usually wrap them in aluminum foil, but you can also use a freezer safe bag. And when you're ready to use them, you can use the Instapot to steam them and have them ready within 30 minutes to an hour. By freezing them uncooked, you will not lose any of the flavor of the tamales, and they will taste just like if you had just prepared them that day. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and found it useful. And if you did, give us a big thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in our next video with a different recipe.